Well, good morning, everybody. Good to have you on for this Power Up. Good to join you on this fine Thursday morning. Uh, hope you are well wherever it is that you are watching from. Uh, as uh, we've got people just now jumping on, uh, be sure to hit that share button if you are just jumping on so that uh, people know that we are live and good to ha be with you this morning. Uh, Hard to believe it's Thursday. Hard to believe revival services are over. Uh, man, it just seems like we're just getting into it. Uh, but man, what an exciting uh, uh, a time uh, to just, uh, yes, to be alive, but an exciting time to uh, be revived in our walk with the Lord. Uh, and man, really just kind of, as we heard last night, just kind of just hit that reboot button and let's get serious about the things of God, our relationship with Jesus Christ, our service to Him. Uh, and, and let's not forget, and, and this is where we're going to be at today as we look into Revelation chapter number 2. Let's not forget why we do what we do. Uh, that's important for us to remember. And sometimes we need that reboot sometimes because we do forget, okay? Uh, man, just tremendous uh, messages this week, powerful uh, messages encouraging us uh, to remain faithful to uh, to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, uh, and to what He has called us to do. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the revival. Uh, and then I, I hope I hope at the same time, not not so much that it hurt, but I, I hope it made us a little uncomfortable as well uh, as we are revived in our spirit. We we just didn't have revival for it to come uh, massage our ego and. Uh, make us feel good, although that, that may have happened a little bit, uh, but it, it ought to have been just a little uncomfortable as well as we heard the preaching of the Word of God uh, and as we realized areas of our life in which, you know what, we need to improve upon, and I hope that there was some of that as well. Hit that share button. We're going to be in Revelation chapter number 2. In Revelation chapter number 2, verses 1 through uh, one through seven, we're introduced to this church at Ephesus. This church at Ephesus, Jesus is is commending uh, in verses two and three, saying, hey, I know your works, I know your labor, your patience uh, in the midst of persecution. Uh, hey, you've just kept doing it. Uh, and Jesus says, I've seen it. Uh, and, and he says, hey, I, I know how you've uh, uh, thwarted the false teachers. You vetted the false teachers that had tried to come in. Uh, and you know what? You've labored. You've not fainted. And Jesus commends this church at Ephesus for, for their labor uh, and for the fact that, you know what, they didn't quit. However, as we get into verse number four, and this is, this is where we see uh, just tying it in kind of to last night's message, this is where we see that reboot button need, needing to be pressed. Uh, this is where we see that, uh, you know what, it's good to be serving the Lord. It's good to be on fire for the Lord. Uh, but we've got to do it with the right spirit, have the right motivation behind it. Now look with me at verse number four. Jesus says to this church at Ephesus, nevertheless, okay, that's kind of the pause. That means that something different is about to happen. It's a conjunction. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against the... Okay, Jesus says, guys, you're working hard. You're enduring persecution. You're trying those false teachers that come in. You haven't given up. However, I do have something that concerns me, Jesus is saying here. And at the end of verse number four, we see how big this is because thou hast left thy first love. And this is really what hit home last night, I believe. We can get so caught up in ministry. We can love the church and not be right with Jesus. Uh, we, can, we can be serving in the church, uh, but not serving Jesus. Uh, and this, is, this goes back to, uh, to the heart. Uh, and he says, uh, Jesus says we've left, uh, or that this church, they've left their first love. Uh, and then he calls them, all right, hey guys, you've left your first love. Here's how you get it back. How do you get back to that which is truly important? How do you get back to loving Jesus? 
First of all, number five, uh, verse number five, he says this. He says, remember. Remember. Uh, remember, therefore, from whence uh, thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Jesus says, hey, guys, go back to the cross. Remember from whence thou art fallen. Hey, remember what Christ has saved you from, and don't fall back into it. Uh, remember, uh, he says, he says from whence thou art fallen. He then says, and repent. And let me just remind you of this. As we consider that, that word reboot, as we consider that word revival, even as we talk about the church at Ephesus here, uh, we see this, hey, remember uh, from whence thou art fallen, that second, that second step, if you will, of, of getting back to our first love is repent. It means taking, making a 180 and going back to. Jesus says remember, and then there's got to be some action behind it. You know, I think, I think many times in life there's that idea of remembering. Oh, remember the good old days. Remember Christmases long ago. Remember this. Hey, I remember when I made that decision for Jesus Christ. And those are, those are good things. That's a good thing to do, to reflect, to remember back upon. But there needs to be some action behind that. Otherwise, you know what that remembering leads to? That remembering leads to depression. That remembering can lead to discouragement. So we cannot just stop at the remembering. There's got to be some repenting. What does that mean? Some, some turning back, some going back to, some doing something about it. Uh, and I'm so thankful that we read in the book of First John chapter 1 and verse number 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John is written to the believer. Uh, and John says, hey, confess, Jesus will, will forgive our sins. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, and here, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, John is penning Jesus' words here. And Jesus says, hey, remember. Remember where, where you used to be. Hey, remember that time. Remember when you trusted Christ as your Savior and you loved me. Hey, remember that and repent. Hey, let's get back to it. And so uh, we see these, these, these two steps uh, to regaining and reigniting uh, that love, that our first love with Jesus Christ. So remember, repent, and then look, look down at verse number five, and do the first works. And do the first works. Hey, let's get back. What, what's that mean? Hey, get back to the basics. Do the first works. Sometimes we, we over, over complicate things. And Jesus just says, hey, guys, guys, remember where, from whence you've fallen. Okay, remember. Uh, hey, repent. Let's turn back to it. Uh, and then do. Hey, do the first works. Let's get back to uh, the, the basic things like, uh, like our church attendance, our faithfulness to church. Uh, Brother Maynard said it last night, sometimes we can get so caught up in loving church uh, that we don't love Jesus and we love the church so much, uh, the, the building and all of that, that we begin to look at uh, that at everything and, uh, and that love for the church. And there's no, there's no desire to grow. There's no desire to change. There's no desire to improve because we love the church rather than loving Jesus. Uh, and man, uh, let's get back to the basics. Hey, let's get back to our faithfulness to church. Let's get back to our, uh, our Bible reading. Let's get back to simple obedience to Jesus Christ. Let's get back to those things. Let's get back to, uh, to, to allowing God to, uh, to infiltrate every area of our heart. Let's meditate on his word day and night. Let's do the first things. Get back to the simple things. Man, I know in my life, sometimes I tend to overcomplicate things. Uh, and Jesus says, hey, guys, you've left your first love. You're so busy doing. Hey, let's, let's remember. Remember from whence you are fallen. Hey, remember how it used to be. Let's repent. Hey, get things right. And then let's do the first things. Uh, I, I say this probably, 
I don't know if you could say it too much, but if anybody does, I guess I could. The Bible says, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Hey, let's get back to doing what we know God wants us to do. Back to the basics. Now let's continue. Jesus then uh, says this, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Uh, and we note this, and as maybe as you, as you travel, as you see maybe other churches, uh, what happens sometimes because of this, this lack of, of loving Jesus, this lack of a willingness to remember to, and then repenting and then doing the first things, it, it leads oftentimes to to churches dying, uh, and uh, that's a sad thing. And we see here that, uh, hey, repent. Jesus says at the end of verse number five, "Except thou repent, hey, what will happen? Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place." Uh, listen, the culture isn't to blame for for our churches dying. Uh, the government isn't to blame for our churches dying. The economy isn't to blame for our churches dying. Who's to blame? Unrepentant believers. And the church that was once alive and thriving, uh, they got caught up in the busyness of the ministry and the busyness of serving, and they began loving the church, and that's an okay thing to do, but when that becomes number one, they began loving the church rather than loving Jesus, that's when the church begins to die. We need to remember what Christ has done for us. We need to remember his love for us, and that we need to repent. We need to repent of, uh, of loving placing things above Jesus Christ. We need to repent of those things. And then we need to get back to the basics. Let's do the first things. Man, Bible reading, prayer, faithless to church, uh, having a godly testimony, being separated from sin, uh, not allowing uh, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life to rule in our life. We need to repent. Hey, no matter where you're watching from, do you want to see your church grow? Where does that begin? Obviously, it begins with the pastor. Well, maybe a little bit. So it begins. It begins in your life. It begins in my life. In getting back to our first love. So much takes the place of it, and it's not just... It's not just uh, the church that takes the place of it. The things of this world, the cares of this world can take the place of our love for Christ. Verse number six says, but this, but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nic Nicolaitans, uh, which, which I also hate. And we'll, uh, we're going to see that, uh, that term uh, later on in chapter number two. And I've kind of already gone over my time here this morning. So, We'll, we'll explain what Nicolaitans is. We'll come back to this verse as we consider Nicolaitans later on in the passage here. But just know this, that uh, Jesus says, these are the things which, which I also hate. And these, these Nicolaitans were, uh, were probably very liberal in their Christianity. Uh, and uh, uh, they partook of the things of the world and tried to bring the world into the church. And, and Jesus, once again, commends these this church at Ephesus. Hey, hey, you, hey, you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. But you left your first love. And then verse number seven, he closes out, and Jesus closes out, and he says, uh, to the individual, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Uh, and that's the, that means this is the challenge for us. Hey, do you ha can you hear? Do you have ears? Hey, let's hear what the Spirit, let's hear what Jesus has to say to the churches. And then he closes out, to him that overcometh, 
will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Uh, Jesus then encourages us to, to keep on, to, to overcome our faults as we seek to remember, repent, and do those first things. Uh, and he says, man, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the God of paradise. Listen, we have in Jesus Christ, we have an abundant life. We read about that. Uh, in, in the book of John, uh, that abundant life, we, we read about uh, uh, the abundant fruit that, that, uh, that God would have us to produce, uh, that, that uh, uh, we would produce much fruit. Uh, and let me tell you this, there's going to be tremendous celebration in heaven. Uh, and God wants to use us uh, in our time upon this earth. So let's remember let's repent then let's just do listen revelation chapter 22 uh closes out with this description of of the new heaven the new earth uh and in in revelation chapter 22 uh we see this uh, this new the new jerusalem in verse number one it says and he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the lamb in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations and there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it and a servant shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light for the sun, light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. That's a description of our future home, that new Jerusalem. That's what we have to look forward to. And so John, Jesus is encouraging this church, hey guys, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to your first love. Eternity's coming. In fact, at the end in Revelation chapter 22, Jesus says, Behold, I come quickly. He's coming back. Are you ready? Are you ready for Christ's return? If not, let's get back to our first love. And let's remember. Hey, let's repent. And then let's do those first things. Get back to the basics. We're going to end with that uh, this morning. Uh, trust that it was an encouragement to you. Thank you so much for being on today. We'll look at uh, beginning Friday or tomorrow. We'll look at that next church that Jesus addresses. But let me welcome those uh, and greet those that have commented live. If you have not shared yet, I would encourage you to please share uh, this power up so that others can jump on here. Cliff and Karen, good morning to you both. Thank you for watching today. Uh, Dennis and Geraldine, good morning to you. Uh, hope you guys have a great day. Uh, Gene, good morning to you. Good to have you on. Ingrid, good morning to you. Uh, love you and have an awesome day. Uh, Pat, good morning to you as well. Uh, hope you have a, have a great day. Cliff and Karen, uh, thank you for your second comment there. Jody, good morning to you. And Brian and Cindy, good morning to you both. Hope you guys have an awesome day. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back at it again tomorrow. Uh, Lord willing, and uh, so I hope you'll have a great day today. Hey, let's let's get back to our first love, and let's experience the the, the abundant life that Christ has for us. We'll touch base again tomorrow morning.